We're here in Jerusalem at the Damascus Gate leading into the Arab quarter of the old city. I know you've read about the Damascus Road, but stay with us to find out what's going on today at the Damascus Gate. My heart was glad when they said to me, let us go let us go to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Lord. Yes, let us go. Let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss and we want to welcome you to our series on Jerusalem, the ancient gates, the future glory. Yeah, we're really on a journey, aren't we? We're going through all of the gates, seeing that they have a historical, a current, and a prophetic meaning. And uh, we're really going to take you on this tour. We've been going through the Dung Gate, beginning at the Dung Gate, going to the Zion Gate, the Jaffa Gate, the New Gate. Today, We'll be looking at the Damascus Gate, and in upcoming programs, we're going to finish the entire modern city of Jerusalem by looking at Herod's Gate, the Lion's Gate, and finally, the Eastern Gate, or the Golden Gate, the beautiful gate, the Messiah's Gate. Wow, what a journey. Before we get to the Damascus Gate, we're going to hear from Professor Shimon Gibson, and he's going to tell us about a gate that dates back to the time of Yeshua, Jesus. Let's take a look. Ancient texts and scripture tell us about the gates of Jerusalem. We were provided sometimes with their names and their location, but archaeological excavations have only produced one or two. This is one of those gates. It's located on the western side of Jerusalem, on the side of a building complex which existed in the first century at the time of Jesus, known as the Praetorium. This is the place where the trial of Jesus took place. Now it's quite important because here at this gate, Jesus was brought. He was then uh, brought in front of Pontius Pilate, condemned, and then led off for crucifixion. We hear from the Gospel of uh, John that it was at the place known as Lithostratus, which means in Greek, stone pavement. And this is what has been found in excavations here, a pavement situated between two gates in front of the military barracks of the Praetorium. The other feature which is important is that we hear from the Gospel of John that the place was also known as Gabata, which is Aramaic for stone um, or rocky protuberance. And over on the left you can see part of the rocky outcrop, which is probably being referred to there. So this is the place of the trial of Jesus. Now, we know of uh, other gates which existed around Jerusalem because of their descriptions. Some of them are rather oblique, such as the, the, the name of uh, one gate, which is the Sheep Gate. It clearly led to a place where the sheep were watered or, or kept in a corral. Alternatively, we can have a place known as the Dung Gate. Clearly, uh, dung and rubbish was thrown out of the gate, but it doesn't really help us in positioning those gates. There are other gates, however, which uh, have topographical information. Uh, gates which exist even today, known as the Damascus Gate and the Jaffa Gate. These are gates which led towards uh, the cities which were uh, at a greater distance from uh, Jerusalem. So this is the information that we have from archaeology and from ancient texts combined together, they give us that picture which helps us understand the topography of Jerusalem at the time of Jesus. Professor Gibson is a world-renowned archaeologist with unprecedented access to nearly every major discovery pertaining to Jesus. He's been excavating in Jerusalem for over 30 years and is very familiar with the ancient gates of this holy city. The Damascus Gate is situated on the northern side of the old city. In fact, it's one of the principal gates of Jerusalem. 
It's named after the city of Damascus, which is, of course, outside of Jerusalem, and the road led towards the north in a direction of Damascus. Of course, it would have taken about a week from any of the going from uh, Jerusalem to reach uh, Damascus. However, uh, under this gate, which was built by Suleiman the Magnificent in the mid-16th century, are the remains of an ancient Roman gate, which has been excavated by archaeologists. And this Roman gate is quite interesting because it's part of a triumphal uh, gate which was built at the time of Hadrian when he rebuilt Jerusalem as Aelia Capitolina. This gate has three entrances, only the side left uh, side of this gate has been unearthed. Inside the gate, archaeologists came across a large expanse of pavement, stone pavement, and this pavement is what is shown on the Madaba map of Jerusalem. It's a Byzantine mosaic map which represents Jerusalem in the 6th century. And in the middle of this uh, courtyard, paved courtyard, is a representation of a column. And it's quite interesting that the name uh, in Arabic of this gate is Bab el Lamud, the gate of the column which continues that tradition going back to Roman times. We're coming to you from Jerusalem. We're here at the Damascus Gate. The Damascus Gate is on the north side of the city and it is one of the most important gates in the city. It is the entrance to all of the Arab life here. There's the marketplace, it's busy, people are coming and going, buying and selling. It's a hotbed of life, uh, Muslim expression is here. And uh, it is an important gate because it points towards Chem and also towards Damascus. Yeah, like we were telling you earlier, each gate is named after the directions through which it's pointed. And this gate is the northern gate and it's pointing to Damascus. Shechem at the other side of it. But also it's wonderful to notice that God has said that there would be trouble from the north. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel said that there is trouble coming from the north. And this gate is pointing towards the north. And often there is trouble on this side of the city. But isn't it amazing that going north from here is where Paul went and was on the road to Damascus when he had his encounter with Yeshua. We read about it in Acts chapter 9, where he was knocked down, he was blinded, and he was sent to the house of a believer who healed him, and the gospel went forward because of what happened to Saul on the road to Damascus. We're standing here on the gate, near the gate, that leads to the road to Damascus. We are currently in a season when all eyes are on Damascus because of the troubles in Syria and the, the difficulty that's there. And the Israelis are watching that, the world is watching that. We don't know what will happen in the short term. We do know that in the long term there's going to be a prophetic change that comes to Damascus, which is very, very serious. In the meantime, we're watching because of the Syrians being a proxy for Iran and the troubles that come from Iran as they marshal through Syria, Hezbollah in the north. So trouble comes from the north, but the gospel went north from here, and so there's always the possibility of God doing something over and above what we could ask or think. Absolutely, and that is our heartbeat, is that we pray for the soul conversion of all people groups, yes. that encounter from God that takes us out of a religious concept and brings us into a reality. You know, Saul heard the Lord himself talk in a Hebrew tongue and saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And God himself revealed himself and took the blinders off, and that's what we're praying for the Muslim people here. And I know that you're wanting us, and you're wanting to stand with us as we pray for the revelation of Sar Shalom to come in this northern gate. Yes, the Prince of Peace, that he would invade the mosque, that he would come to the Muslim Amen. people and transform their hearts to those who love everyone around them. Would you like to know more about the end times? In this week's resource, the rapture is just one of the subjects you'll discover inside Zola Levitt's fascinating booklet, The Beginning of the End. Zola also teaches about the Antichrist, Armageddon, the second coming of Messiah, and more. You'll be thrilled by prophetic understanding when reading The Beginning of the End. 
Call 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at levitt.com. Hello, I'm Wayne Fournier, and I've been a supporter of Zola Levitt Ministries for many years. If you see this outreach as worthy of your financial support, please call us at 1-800-WONDERS. Visit us online at levitt.com or write to us at Zola, Box 12, 268, Dallas, Texas, 75225. We depend on your financial sustenance. Thank you. We're here in Jerusalem at the Damascus Gate, a very important gate. It is the center of Muslim activity in the north of the city and leads to Damascus, where the gospel went with Saul as he was encountered by Yeshua. But if you go back in time to Genesis 2460, there's a prophecy to Rebekah about the twins that she would bring forth. And it says to her, the Yerash Zarech et Sha'ar Son Av, that your descendants would possess the gates of their enemies. In other words, there's going to become a spiritual battle between the sons of Jacob and the sons of Esau. But folks, there is hope because both the sons of Jacob and the sons of Esau can turn to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through Yeshua HaMashiach. And we're here to declare that hope. Just recently, I was with a young new friend of mine here in the land who came from a Muslim background and was gloriously encountered by Yeshua, a personal salvation with spoken words to his heart that just transformed his life. And now he's being trained up to follow the Lord and to be a blessing to all around him. We've had the privilege of meeting him this trip to Israel. I want you to know that there are others that God wants to raise up out of the Muslim world. Not only so, right near here are the, the ancient gates, the original gates, and near those gates, the cave of Zedekiah. And that is where even today, the Freemasons come to this area in order to do their initiation rites. Folks, this is a center of occultic and religious and dark activity, and God wants to transform it. Your prayers are vital for this area. Not far from here is Mea Shearim, the most ultra-Orthodox area where we're praying that the ultra-Orthodox Jews would come to know our own Messiah, that they would be lifted up out of this 18th century, 19th century garb and, and rabbi worship and come into the worship of the one living rabbi, Yeshua HaMashiach. We're looking for that. We're looking for the overturning of the occultic spirit, spirit that's here, the Freemasons, and the, the way that the Freemasons go out from here around the world to work behind the scenes for evil. We want to see that overturned. And certainly, as far as Islam goes, we're looking for our Arab cousins to come to know Yeshua and for all those around the world that go by the religious ideology of Islam, that they would be transformed as well, that they would have a Saul on the road to Damascus experience, that they would be transformed. And from this place would arise apostolic type leadership to come and say, there is one way and his name is Yeshua HaMessiah. Will you pray that way with us? I know you will. The wonders of the Bible can only be experienced in Israel. Zola Tours invites you to join Miles and Catherine Weiss for a dream vacation you will never forget. We offer a deluxe 10-day tour in the spring and fall with an optional extension to see Petra. A Greece extension is available for our spring tour. We handle the details. You experience the study tour of a lifetime. Call or click and join us. The scripture talks so much about going to the land of Israel. It says in Psalm 48, walk about Zion. Go all around her, consider her palaces, and then tell the generations to come. Mm -hmm. That's what we would love you to do when you come to Israel. You'll learn more and, and then we'll begin to share from generation to generation with, with the people that we love the most, our family. Yeah. You know, we love it when you stay in contact with us, whether it's Facebook or our website. And also the newsletter is made available just for you so you can stay up to date on what's happening in Israel and we can give you a gift just by logging onto our website and asking for it. It's great. You know, when people come to Israel, they go out as ambassadors 
for what God is doing. It's not just about the Jewish people. Right. It's, it's about everything he's doing in the world and how he's really getting us all ready for the coming of mm. Yeshua. The coming of Messiah is spoken so loudly as you go through the land of Israel. Well, coming up, we're going to hear from Jan Willem van der Hoven. He's one of our heroes. He's an elder statesman as a Christian Zionist. He's been standing with Israel for decades, and his passion will awaken in you love for Israel and the Jewish people. Let's go to Jan Willem. Jan Willem, always great to be with you. What about the International Christian Zionist Center? Tell us about the heartbeat of that work and how it evolved and where you're going with it. Well, it's... Um amazing the lord has led me already years ago when i finished my work at the uh, garden tomb uh, to live in anatot where jeremiah uh, lived and uh, although one cannot compare oneself with jeremiah i still feel mm -hmm. it was the lord yes that brought me to that anato because i have such a prophetic uh, calling, I believe, by yes. God's grace and yep. mercy to the nations. Yep. And however important um, the concern for having godly uh, ministers and government uh, people, mm -hmm. the Bible is so clear that a nation has no chance mm. to survive in the end time if it goes against Israel. Yes, It doesn't say the nation that does abortion will perish, mm. although that is terrible. Yes. But the Bible is unbelievably clear. Yes. The nation that shall not serve Israel, Isaiah 60 verse 12, shall perish. And then God adds through the prophet, yes, shall be utterly perishing. Mm. And then in Joel it says, uh, God will bring all the nations to the valley uh, of Jehoshaphat to judge them, yes. not because of general immorality, however bad that is, yes. and sucks the strengths also of America, yes. but the reason that God gives is because these nations that I'm going to judge have divided my land. Mm. I think I'm the only one of the prophetic people that live actually in the West Bank who have my, my um, office near Bethel where the, the story started. Yes. I wish that all the American Christians, mm. Jews and believers would rise up and say, we believe the Bible. And the Bible says that God has given all this land mm -hmm. to his people. And he is so excited about it that when he writes and prophesies about the return of the Jews to their nation, he says, I will plant you with my whole heart and my whole soul. And I look up, we are here in front of the Creator, the God of Israel, yes. the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who by his grace and through Jesus has made me also as a Gentile, his son. And I said, God, you through all the stars and planets all over the universe, is it so important for you to bring your little people, Israel, back to this little place called Israel, a small place, mm -hmm. when I know the Arabs have twice the size of the United States of America as territory? Is it so important for you? Then where is the passion of all the Christians who see this program? What about your whole heart yes. and your whole soul? Yes. Are you willing to, 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 to flow with God? Says God, if it's so important, mm. I'll tell you, even now, while I speak, I feel the Lord says, show them, yes. show them how important it yes. is. God has promised to save this planet Earth from its own stupidity mm. and sin and, and, and rebellion mm. through one nation. And Paul says it, even in the New Testament, if their rejection, their diminishing, their scattering has meant the reconciliation of the Gentiles yes. who have now, through the gospel, be able to become sons and daughters of that wonderful God that I love, what shall the receiving and the fullness of Israel be oh, yeah, but yeah. life from the dead from this planet Earth? Yes. So how, how can Christians not be excited with their God? Says, Lord, if you need the Jews to be planted on their own earth, mm -hmm. on their own land, mm -hmm. you know, it's very clear. God says 
it is my people, and God says, it is my land. Yes. So he puts his people on his land. And no Abu Mazen, and no Obama, and no European uh, uh, weak politicians are going to stand in his way. And God speaks from heaven. And I feel that God wants the Christians to become a little bit more courageous in their speaking force. Yes. The nations imagine a vain thing. And what is the vain thing? That all the nations, even George W. Bush and mm. the European leaders and all the leaders of the world have agreed to, there will be peace when we have two-state solution. Two-state solution. Sure. And we know it's going to be the opposite of peace. Mm -hmm. As even Rabin said, to have a Palestinian state will be on the ruins of the state of Israel. Mm. The Jews parted with, with, with Gush Katif. Yes, Gaza. Did it become with Gaza? Yes. Did, did it become peace? No, it became a terrorist base. They went out of Lebanon. Did it cause more peace between Lebanon and Israel? No, it became a Hezbollah terrorist state. So now the stupid world with stupid politicians are telling Israel, do it a third time. Mm -hmm. Recede from the West Bank. And all the Muslims say, and we will make it. Mm -hmm. the, cornerstone of the destruction of what will then be left of Israel. When the nations rage and all the kingdoms fall, he says I am, I am, I am, oh, and there's a river whose streams make glad. The city of God. They flow to his holy habitation. They flow to the home of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He breaks the bow and he shatters the spear and as I am, I am, I am here. So we will not fear, though this world should change, though the waters roar, though the mountains shake and tremble, for he's a present help in trouble. In trouble. Marty sings it so beautifully that the I am shall have the last words. Yes. You know, the kings of the earth rage, it says in Psalms 2, against mm -hmm. the council and against his against his own will. Mm -hmm. That they try to divide the land, they mm -hmm. try to they try to fix things in the natural that God can only fix. It's really true. This story did not begin in the 20th century when the Jewish people came back after the Holocaust. It goes back to the 19th century and then back to the first century right. and then back to the time of David and then back to the time of Abraham. This is a long story right. that God has intended for many, many centuries to come to pass. And this uh, 
tension that we see in the land and the, the, these posturing right. over the land, it's just really the nations raging against God mm -hmm. himself, mm -hmm. against his word and against his Christ, against his Mashiach, his Messiah. And that's really what we're seeing. You know, I love the scripture when it talks about the God of Jacob is mm. our refuge. Yes. You know, he himself, I mean, Jacob wrestled with God, mm -hmm. but then through that wrestling, mm -hmm. God began to show us as his people that there's a refuge in him. No yeah. matter what wrestling we're feeling, mm -hmm. we can find our safety in the Lord himself. Yeah, I think about Psalm 122, we always close with that, but it also says earlier, Omdot raglenu bisharich Yerushalayim, our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. There's a prophetic word in that, mm -hmm. that the believing community, the Jewish people first and foremost, and then those grafted in, will stand within the gates of Jerusalem. It's just the, it's God's word. It's God's right. plan for that area. You know, the, we've heard from uh, Shimon Gibson. We've heard about the archaeology of the land. We've heard from so Jan wonderful. Willem, the, the, the theology of the land, but the eschatology, the end times, the study of the end times, the last word of the end times belong to the Lord. The I am. Yes, he is the great I am. He will have his way yes. in that land and on this planet. Yes. Uh, it's not an accident that the, na the gates are mentioned 129 times. Wow in the scripture. It's something that God is pointing to because ultimately the word is to open up the gates so that the King of Glory can come in. And that's where we'll end this series. We'll be with that mysterious Eastern gate, the Messiah's gate. The mercy gate. The mercy gate, the King's gate. It's gonna be really amazing. You know, God is just so much bigger than the tensions we see on the political mm -hmm. realm. Mm -hmm. And he will have the last word. Next week, we're going to go to Herod's gate and see something about the tension between the natural and the supernatural. You know, I always like to remember Psalm 2 about when the, when the heathen rage yes. and they, they do this, they try to seek counsel to see how they can undo the plan mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. God sits in the heaven and laughs. <laughs> And that's the attitude we need to have. We need to be sober, we need to be awake, we need to be vigilant, we need to know our prophecy, yes. but we're not to be in fear. Yes. We're to have the peace of God, the joy of God, the laughter of God. It's really true, thank you for that. And that's why we always remind you, Shalu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. My heart was glad when they said to me, Yes, let us go on, let us go on to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.